So you've decided WordPress isn't for you, which begs the question, what is the best WordPress alternative? Whether you're building a corporate site, portfolio, e-commerce store, or blog, I'll share my favorite options for each use case. Now, before we dive into the first alternative, I want to cover my ideology around what makes a good WordPress alternative. At its core, WordPress is a content management system designed with blogging in mind. It exploded in popularity in the past 15 years and currently powers over 43% of the internet. Due to its market share, WordPress has an expansive ecosystem of third-party plugins to enhance functionality. These plugins let you do things like run an e-commerce store, a membership community, or an online course. And that's largely what's kept WordPress on top. It's insanely flexible. So I'm going to focus on platforms that can truly compete with the functionality of WordPress. Because of this, I'll be looking at both closed source and open source platforms. I'm also analyzing this from the perspective of an average user. I'm not a developer, so if you're wondering which WordPress alternative is best when it comes to APIs and code architecture, this isn't the video for you. With that being said, one of the most powerful WordPress alternatives is Webflow. Webflow is a no-code website builder with a flexible drag-and-drop page editor. The page editor has all your standard layout tools like sections, containers, and flex boxes. There's also elements like buttons, forms, image galleries, and Lottie animations. You can fine-tune everything in Webflow. The size, position, typography, effects, and more can all be modified in the right sidebar. What's most impressive about Webflow is the CMS Collections feature. You can use CMS Collections to store blog posts, but you can also create a custom collection for anything. Team members, events, menu items, anything you can think of. It works exactly like the Advanced Custom Fields plugin in WordPress, but it's built into Webflow. Designers will also enjoy the Figma to Webflow app, allowing you to design in Figma and launch your site on Webflow. Webflow also natively supports e-commerce, which is perfect if you need to sell a product or two on your website. There's also an app marketplace with apps to create online courses, build membership sites, and create advanced logic. So if you're looking for a powerful website builder with a drag and drop page editor that resembles Photoshop, I think you'll like Webflow. If you like using Elementor, you'll feel right at home in Webflow. It's also great if you need a highly flexible CMS. If you use advanced custom fields on your WordPress site, you can do all the same things in Webflow. But it does have some downsides. The pricing structure is very confusing. There are site plans and workspace plans. Site plans are for individual websites, and workspace plans are designed to give teams, freelancers, and agencies staging capabilities and collaboration features. Essentially, if you're building on Webflow for clients, you may still need to pay for a workspace plan even if your client is paying for their own site plan. Also, Webflow is not a great fit for e-commerce stores. Sure, it supports e-commerce, but Webflow doesn't have the advanced automation that many store owners may be looking for. And I'd say the same is true for blogging. If you just need a news or updates page on your website, Webflow will get the job done. But if your site is a blog, I'd choose something else. If you like the idea of Webflow, but the editor feels a bit complicated, check out Wix Studio. Wix Studio is similar to Webflow, but the user interface is simpler and more intuitive. It's got a comparable feature set with a few extra tricks up its sleeve. The native form builder includes conditional logic, something that Webflow is removing from their form builder. There's also a wide variety of section templates available. Webflow has section templates as well, but you have to add them to each site from the marketplace. Wix Studio has an expansive collection of native add-ons for e-commerce, bookings, online communities, and more. Notably, Wix offers a members area app to enable user accounts, which Webflow used to have but discontinued last month. So honestly, between the two, I lean towards Wix Studio. There's just one big quirk that I'd caution you about. Desktop layouts don't automatically scale efficiently for mobile. You can build a dedicated mobile layout by hand, but you shouldn't have to do that for your page to look decent. Unfortunately, even the responsive AI tool to optimize sections can sometimes be a miss, so you're definitely going to spend more time than average optimizing your site for mobile. But overall, I'm genuinely impressed with Wix Studio. I recently challenged myself to rebuild my WordPress site in Wix Studio, and it went really well. Wix Studio is a great fit if you like the power of Webflow, but want a simpler, more approachable editor. It's also great if you want forms with conditional logic or a members area without relying on third-party apps. 
Just like with Webflow, I think there are better options if you're building an e-commerce store or blog. But I do appreciate all the apps that Wix Studio offers. It was easy to connect to my email marketing platform, and it was cool to see that they're a Wix Choice featured app. Now, I know email marketing can seem kind of boring, but it's incredibly important to stay in touch with your audience. If you're running an e-commerce store, it's critical to increase revenue. So it's worth investing the time to set it up. But which platform should you pick? I've really enjoyed Omnisend, and they were kind enough to sponsor this video. Omnisend is an all-in-one email and SMS marketing platform, and whether you're using Wix, Webflow, WordPress, or Shopify, Omnisend works with all website builders. It's got everything you'd expect, like automations with conditional logic, a drag-and-drop campaign builder, and easy-to-digest reports. But where Omnisend really shines is its automation for e-commerce. You can send abandoned cart emails, include dynamic product recommendations, and send promo codes on your customers' birthdays. My business doesn't have a huge emphasis on e-commerce, but I was sold on Omnisend after experiencing their customer support. They have 24-7 human customer support, and it's been incredibly helpful through the entire migration process and getting my automations dialed in. Whether you're running an e-commerce store or a general business, I highly recommend trying Omnisend. It's free for the first 250 contacts, and no features are locked behind a paywall. When you're ready to upgrade, you can get 30% off your first three months with promo code CRAILER30. Huge thanks to Omnisend for supporting the channel. It's the perfect tool to complement the next WordPress alternative, which is Shopify. Shopify is amazing if you're building a dedicated e-commerce store. It brings a refreshingly simple take on store management. If you're coming from WooCommerce, managing orders and products is going to be a lot easier. There's a decent page builder similar to the full site editor in WordPress, but Shopify's builder certainly won't win any awards. With that being said, Shopify has everything your store needs to thrive. I also want to point out that consumers are used to the Shopify checkout page. It's got the same UI for every store regardless of how your pages are designed, and when I see a Shopify checkout page, I know I'm not entering my card number on some random, sketchy site. Some consumers may also enjoy the convenience of ShopPay, which is a Shopify-designed digital wallet similar to PayPal. Shopify has all the add-ons you could need to increase revenue, including a native Omnisend app. Shopify is a great fit if you're launching a purpose-built e-commerce store and want easy back-end management. It's also freeing to not deal with hosting your store, securing sensitive customer details, and integrating a payment processor. But you may see those strengths as weaknesses. If you want full control over where your store's data is hosted, WordPress may ultimately be the best option. This is especially true if you're selling items in restricted categories. Shopify has a list of product types they don't support on their platform for liability reasons, so if you're selling any of these items, you'll want to go elsewhere. Shopify is also costly. Though I think it's a worthy investment in the long run, the $39 a month starting plan might simply be out of reach if you're on a tight budget. If that's the case, you could start selling using another platform and migrate to Shopify when your revenue supports it, which by the way is what a lot of store owners end up doing. Okay, so Shopify is perfect if you're launching an e-commerce store, but what if you just want a simple blog? For blogging, I highly recommend checking out Ghost. Ghost is an open source CMS with an emphasis on blogging. While WordPress also shares this emphasis, you can heavily customize it with its vast library of plugins. Ghost is different. It's amazing for blogging, but it's not designed to do much else. The page builder is bare bones. You can add text and images, but there aren't comprehensive layout tools like containers or flex boxes. You can at least embed YouTube videos, and speaking of YouTube, if you're enjoying this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you'll be the first to see my new videos. There's no e-commerce functionality, and there's no concept of plugins or extensions that add functionality to your site. There are a few official integrations like Zapier and Slack that add dynamic functionality to your site, but for the most part, the integrations are just HTML embeds of third-party tools. So what is Ghost good for? Well, it's great at blogging. It's simple. It just works. It doesn't have that same intimidating feel that WordPress and other CMSs have. If you're launching a blog or secondary site to give news updates or press releases for your brand, I'd recommend checking out Ghost. 
It's perfect if you want an open source blogging platform with the option of self-hosting. It's also perfect if you like the idea of an open source platform, but want a polished setup experience where you don't have to think about hosting. The official hosting available through ghost.org is competitive with other website builders, and you'll never have to worry about scary acronyms like FTP and SSH. On the flip side, Ghost is not a strong fit if you're building a corporate site, landing page, portfolio, or store. The page builder is very basic, and you can't install third-party page builders like you would in WordPress. If you want a simple website builder for corporate sites and portfolios, check out Squarespace. Squarespace is the most beginner-friendly platform on this list next to Ghost, but it's designed to be an all-around website builder. If you've been using WordPress to build static pages with a contact form here or there, Squarespace could be perfect for you. It's like the iPhone of website builders. It's almost as customizable as other builders, but it has guardrails to make sure you can't make an ugly website. If you're an experienced designer who likes to push boundaries and think outside the box, Squarespace isn't for you. Think of Squarespace as a watered down version of Webflow or Wix Studio. It's not a CMS, so if you're doing anything past a basic blog, Squarespace isn't for you. A few honorable mentions are Card, Joomla, and Drupal. Card is a bare bones landing page builder that's simple and affordable. It's not intended for websites with multiple pages, but for a digital business card or basic landing page, it gets the job done. I appreciate that it's only $19 a year to connect custom domains and build up to 10 websites. Joomla and Drupal are perhaps the most direct WordPress competitors. They're both PHP based content management systems launched around the same time as WordPress. I didn't dive deeper into them in this video because, well, they're really difficult to use for the average user, and the plugin ecosystems are far less diverse than WordPress. So functionally, I don't think they're the best alternative for most users. In the end, there's no one best WordPress alternative, and that's because there's no one best platform to build your website. The best alternatives for general website builders are Webflow, Wix Studio, and Squarespace. But if you're building a blog or store, you may want to consider a purpose-built platform for that use case. It's worth experimenting with new options to find the best fit. You might be surprised at what these next-gen website builders are capable of. I rebuilt my WordPress site in Wix Studio, and if you want to see how that went, you can check out that video here.